Well, today we are doing a very, very sweet goat. It's a white goat, um, very nice sunshine greeny garden with a red house and blue door in the back. The author is Hans am Ende. Yeah, and the name of the painting is just goat in the garden. Huh? Very sweet. So the task that should be not that simple because it's all about the proportions. Yeah, but the more you practice, the better you get. So first we take the pencil, you know, definitely eraser, and we're gonna practice then the shape of the goat. Before we start putting the goat on the paper, it's very important that you leave more space here. Yes, this is the rules that, so the goat is not kind of meeting the edge of the paper. No, you need to always leave a bit more air. So this will be the first thing I do. And I'm going to say like, okay, like till here will be my goat. So the, the horns will be somewhere here. Yeah. And then already downside will be the, the face. Yeah. So I'm not starting wrong yet, just saying the dimensions. So here I left my space. Now I need to tell, okay, how big I want my goat to be. And we can do this line of the back leg. Yeah. And this one can already be, yeah, even like a bit closer. Like if you want the goat bigger, I'm going to do it like this. Yeah. So this is my line. So this is the size of my goat. Very nice. So it means I'm drawing all her shape within this part. Okay, once we have this line, we can go actually like do the contour. So the paw side, then the very long straight line of the back. Yeah, so yeah, somewhere here. And then very long line. And it goes a bit more down. Yeah, very nice. And then, and then one more line that goes to the head. Yeah. So maybe like this, yeah. Um, at this moment, your drawing should be very, very flexible. So it means you can erase, um, yeah, and change very easily. Okay, and then we already have a little bit the part of the head. Again, no details, just the common shape. Yes, I can still be wrong. Yeah, if the head should be bigger, if the head should be smaller. And I go further than neck here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I feel maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's, what's this line here on top? It's also like here you can feel it's like the bone. Yeah, and we like all those shapes, they're also connected with the shape of the goat inside. Yeah, so the shadows there are not just by any chance there. All the shadows are connected to the shape of the goat. Yeah. Okay. Now I feel my paw would be a bit. Yeah, so you see, I'm changing all the time. Yeah. Please let me know, girls, if I need to repeat some part. Yeah, or if I shall um, go back and 
do some parts again. Yeah, and goat has both horns and the ears. So there are also kind of double double things there. Here I'm gonna put a bit closer. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a bit easier. Here it is like it's not painted till the end. It's gonna be just the uh, the grass there. It's good. Yeah, it's also like over here, we're gonna make a grass. So it's actually like a little trick so not to draw the complicated parts. Here's gonna be the tail somewhere. You can also definitely show me, ah, I forgot one leg. Uh, before we start painting, you can definitely show me the pencil drawing of your goat. So then we just kind of recheck together the proportions. Mm -hmm. And so also, let's say, of course, first I did like very straight lines just to get the general shape. But later on, of course, I can change it to a bit like show the fur. Mm -hmm. Ah, here is one more important detail. I'm going to show it, draw and show it to you. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's say this hand, this leg that is here in front, here it goes a bit like this line inside the body. Yeah, and I say it's important because then it feels like, you know, because that's also the structure. That's how um, connected. And also this leg, it also goes inside. So it doesn't start where the belly ends, it goes inside the body. Yeah? And those little details are Okay. okay, so it was some technical issue, maybe on my side, sorry for that, so we are back, 
to our sweet Goldie. Yeah, give it thumbs up if you're ready with the goat and we can move or also let me know if you need help. Yeah, if maybe it's sometimes like this one part, you know, just doesn't want to work. Like one leg is not going right. So then I can help you with that too. Julie, do you want to show me your goat? Just to check the proportions. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, looking sweet. Yes, yes, yes. I like it. No, I think it looks good. You got it very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here is come everyone. Ah. Wow, girls, no, no comments from my side. They were so perfect. Yeah, maybe one, one little part, maybe check Ellie if this leg may be like a bit thinner, more in the start, and then this thicker part goes like a bit higher. Yeah, but maybe mm -hmm. also, yeah. I put a cat, but I don't know if you can see it. You know what? There was also a cat, mm, that's nice. I love how you invent your own parts to the paintings. Okay, let's do the um, garden scenery and then we can go straight to the paints. So the rest is very easy. We have our horizontal line very high. So basically we just see a little part of the of the house. We can even see just maybe just the door. And then we can do some, some windows. Yeah, so basically I'm doing just rectangulars. Also, they're going to be at the background. So um, it doesn't have to be like very, very, very precise. The door can be from wood. Then we have huge, nice, huge tree. That also we see a trunk just so just at the bottom. And um, Ellie got me a good idea. So she added cat. We can also add other animals. Maybe there is a squirrel. Yeah, climbing up the tree. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then we can make a bit more some like bushes if you want just kind of to now if we have empty space and we already don't really like really know what to put then we can just put some bushes mm -hmm. 
And what I think is like the most charming in this painting is actually all those shadows. Yeah, and you can see the uh, so sh the grass is like super nicely this fresh green color. And then you have this contrast because there are shadows. So you can say the day is sunny. And then you ha they have the shadows from the tree and you have shadows also from the tree on the goat. And you see the goat becomes a bit more purple. Yeah, like in the pirates where are the shadows. So some other pirates is a bit, a bit more like what? So white, I can see even somewhere a bit peachy, and then the shadowy is purple and it looks nice. Uh -huh. So the gold, yeah, we can just I'm just marking easily. The the most work I'm gonna do straight with the uh, with paints. Mm -hmm. But what's very important is not to forget the shadow under the goat. Huh? Because otherwise it would look strange. Or maybe some people would say, oh, is it a goat, goat vampire? It's not leaving shades. Or the vampires are not just being seen in the mirror. I forget. Yeah, and then the rest also a bit. Yeah, so this is what makes it, this painting, it's a little bit like all, all in small tiny dots, light and dark. This is what I did. Yeah, so this part, the shadow under the goat, is very important. Yeah, and I'm gonna like make a bit darker other parts maybe just easier for you to see but you can just mark the contour yeah because like later with paints it's all going to be fine
Yeah, and what I also do, um, I remove like the hard lines of the goat. I make it a bit more like loose and more hairy. Mm -hmm. And it's also because the goat will be light. So I don't really want to have like dark pencil around. Yeah, so just, of course, we needed first lines in the start to define the shape. But now it's already. And we're drawing now this from, you know, the reproduction of the painting. But imagine yourself, you're in the garden and you need to paint the goat. It will be moving. Huh? It won't be standing and posing, waiting. So it's actually very hard to, it's not easy to, to draw animals because huh? they move. <laughs> Nice. Well, ready to move for the paints? Yeah? No, okay, yeah, we're waiting, waiting, Ellie. No worries. Yeah. So uh, take your time to finish, but we can maybe uh, analyze a bit what color should we take and uh, what should we start with. Juliet, what would be your choice? What would you start with? painting probably the goat because it's the lightest color wow it's the brilliant answer amazing exactly yes so the goat of course is white but if we are taking well i would suggest like mixing very 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 pale peachy color but still like white some slashes of peachy and a little bit of beautiful grayish so here it's even a bit like purplish, yeah, but very, very light. So you will need like lots of white paint and then tiny, tiny bit of, yeah, let's say tiny bit of orange to make peachy and this beautiful grayish color. Then you can mix either blue with tiny bit of brown yeah, this will give you this kind of um, very interesting, like the, the, uh, the color. So it's like calm blue and then lots of white, but we're going to mix it definitely together. Yeah? And after that, the second step, I would say we go with very bright, shiny grass. Yeah, so again, green with lots of yellow, very sunshine. And then we're going to do the, and the rest is easy. Okay, so you also ready, Ellie? I see you taking brush. Yeah, awesome. I'm ready. Nice, let's go, girls. So also before, be careful, remove very nicely all the of the leftovers of erasing and then I take my palette and as I said so white is going to be the hero yeah so we're going to need lots of white the huge a big pail of white yeah. Well, maybe it's not huge. The goat is also not very big, but still, yeah. Um, I would even suggest we work like this, that actually first we can take a brush and I suggest we cover all our goat white, just like this, yeah. So, and you would say, why wow, we have the paper is white. Well, actually the paper is even like a bit more darker than this white well it depends but 
usually if you especially if you use the acrylic but what also it will help it will help us putting these other colors so i'm just putting okay maybe the horn is not really doesn't need to be but the rest the head the neck the body the legs i'm just and i'm doing like in in the big strokes so i can even feel also a bit of um so all my gold is white then i would take hmm i don't have peachy here oh sorry i don't have orange find some yeah so maybe have some orangey so what i do a tiny tiny bit oh this is already even too much this is tiny tiny dot and um And then I can do maybe a little like peachy spots. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show you now a bit closer. So you see, all my gold is white, and I've added some like separate peachy parts, just like to show the light. But now, of course, the main thing, this gray color. And I would say it's even like the, the most important part of this work, because if you get a really nice gray color, then... Um, the rest will be easy. So what, how can you do it? You can take, so I like taking a bit, so I can take blue. This one is dark. Let me try with the lighter blue. And usually blue colors, they are bright, yeah? And we don't really want to have that bright. We want to have pale. So uh, what are we mixing? So we are mixing now blue and brown. So this is, we're going to be getting like, but brown very a little bit. What brown does, it like calms down the, the blue color, yeah? Okay, I think now I had a bit too much of brown. But this will be not the color we're putting. This will be just like the calm blue that we're going to mix with with white. And we're definitely not putting white inside this mix. I'm taking separately a big pile of white. And I'm taking a tiny bit of this grayish mix. Yeah. And then mixing and here you go wow i have this perfectly nice gray color yeah. and i like it much more rather than mixing um with black because this has a bit more like bluish thing and now we can play and having like different tones of gray so you see now i can have like very pale gray 
but I had a bit more of this initial mix of blue and brown. And now I have a bit darker gray. This way I can use for like the shadow parts. And um, yeah, and also don't forget to clean well the brush because you take strong colors. Blue is strong, brown is strong. And um, yeah, so you just kind of clean it well, sometimes even wipe with paper towel. And then of course I would suggest starting with the light gray and just going to the shadow parts of the goats. And where are the shadow parts of the goats? Of the goat one. So it's definitely like under the, the face uh, and then under the neck because the sun shining on top. Yeah. Then as we mentioned here at the back, well, it's the shadow from the tree, yeah. but still it's also. And now, of course, I have these kind of lines that are not very natural. Yeah, they look like, hmm, what I do. Yeah, I don't wait much time till it dries. Like I've put some of them, then I wash my brush. So my brush now is clean, but wet. And I kind of blend, blend it in, like remove the borders, let's say. Yeah, I call this action removing borders. So now this color feels much more integrated. Yeah, it doesn't feel like some strange spots. And, and it also works nicely because we had our white paint prior. So, um, yeah. And don't worry if by any chance, let's say you get your goat too, too dark, you say, ah. The most important thing, first you wait till it's dry, yeah. And then you can go just straight on top with white paint and it will make it also nicely, like it will remove your grayish, strong grayish. And that will, yeah. So here I'm already getting Uh, do we do the peach by the shadows? So, yes, the peach color is coming kind of exactly in between. So, um, it's also like light parts, yeah, but it's all mixed up. So here you can say also maybe like study a bit more the, the original one. Yeah, I hope the computer gets the... So there are like some... Now I'm going to try to show it with a pencil, like there is some peachy here on the back, right on top. And then I see some peachy, like a little bit at the bottom on the tail, a bit here on the leg. Huh? So it's not much, but it gives a nice touch. So it's not just white and gray. So it's also... Uh, But also, let's say you do something with the gold and then if you feel, okay, it was a bit too much, feel free to just let it rest. Yeah, for example, oh, now my dark leg is a bit too dark. Yeah, but if I'm quick, I know with the water, I can remove it yeah, and it's gonna be all fine. And we can definitely come back and 
improve the gold. No. Just like no rushing. Okay. And the layer of white works very nicely because it also gets like interacted with the paint I'm putting on top. Nice. Yeah, so the parts where I feel my gray is too strong, I just put the white on top. Yeah. Nice. And of course, like the more light you will leave your gold, the better it will look, because I think it's the whole image works nicely because it's all so colorful. Bright green grass, bright house, and then the it's white, you know? So, um, but still we need to do the process of grayish. But later you will show me, and if it's like too dark, it's easy correct with white, putting white on top. And then it will look professional because it's going to have like all the shadow story. So I also definitely suggest you not to kind of struggle too long with the gold. Yeah, it's always better to leave to rest and then come back. You know, otherwise it's often that happens like um, the drawing gets tired. Yeah, there is even this kind of expression because like when we move too much, back and forth, the brush, then um, no. But of course, I'm waiting for you. You let me know. And the next thing what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the lightest green you have and um and yellow and we're gonna make a very bright tasty sunshine grass
Yes, I know the goat, it will be the hardest part. The rest will be much more easy. <laughs> Ellie, don't eat the rush. <laughs> Okay, girls, can I start with the grays? I had to redo my shadows because my goat got messed up. Yes, so the secret is, you remember our golden secret? Let it dry. This is like absolutely must. And the best thing to do it, you just go and paint somewhere else. You just um, leave it rest and you paint the grass, the house, the tree. You know, and then it's done. Like, mm -hmm. they're like all over the goat and also in the grass. So I'm gonna pick the rest of the grass and then I'm gonna do it over the gray so that it's not like all over the place. Nice, nice. So I already feel um what you uh, which trouble is are you having with the goat that like gray got too much all over the place. So remember, once it's dry. You just go with white on top. Yeah, you just have your white a bit like watery. So it's going to have this gray color shine through, but your goat will come back in nicely white. But the goat must be dry. Yeah, the paint, it will not work if the gray is still like watery moving. So I say, yeah, we just kind of let the goat rest. We do the rest. And then you just take pure clean white and you go on top and you will see it will be magic. Your goat will be like very nice, shiny white again. Hmm? Okay, nice. Yeah. So now let's try to make a very shiny grass. And I would say even more yellow than green. Yeah. So... And we will be putting it like all over the place. So even where are the shadows on the grass? Because uh, this color is very light. Yeah. So what I do, I have lots of my very nice yellow. And I'm adding always very slowly. I don't go like straight into it. I take just a tiny bit, you see? I'm taking like a tiny, tiny bit of my brush. Ooh, and it already makes the effect. And if it's not enough, I take a bit more, but not too much. Cool, and I'm getting a nice color. Yeah, because if I go too quick, it's very easy to um, to ruin it. Yeah, and then another thing, you just play. Look, you play, and like the more messy you go with with the grass the cooler it looks, yeah? So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's even a bit like more, like I'm putting strokes and then I'm a bit cleaning my brush above the paper. Yeah? So you see, it's, it's really, really yellowishy. I can go also changing, of course. I put a bit like yellowishy. Then I change. And then I add a bit more green. I can have it a bit more greenish. So then it's all not to the same and too boring, like one color. Yeah. And here I go all over the place because it's light color. So all over a part of the gold, of course. But like the shadow areas. Well. But I would say the more sunshiny,
Yeah, and well, even in the back, it should be a bit more darker, but it's okay. I can like put it a little bit and then, then we will also, we will let our beautiful sunshine grass dry. Uh, we can go like to do the, the tree, the house. And we're, we're going to be putting another layer. So the dark layer we're going to be putting on top. Uh, so now it's just all these light parts. Uh, but the secret of this painting, why it looks so nice, uh, so eye-catching, is exactly the game of uh, bright and dark. Yeah? Exactly because there are also many dark shadows. That's why the goat and the grass look so shiny. Yeah? So this is also something that we will try to, to reach. Ellie, what's going on with your drawing? <laughs> drippy thing. The drippy thing? Where there's water on your paper like we did with the screen. Uh, I'm doing that. I see. Whoa. <laughs> Ah, I could glimpse the color. You had a very nice color, Ellie, this greenishy yellow. Mm -hmm. Very cool.
So can I move forward, girls, with the tree in the house? Yeah. Cool. Okay. The thing with the tree will be the same thing with the grass. First, we go with the light brown for the whole tree, and then we do the dark brown top. Yeah. This is basically the our typical move. So let's say if you have only one brown, I take now, for example, ochre for the light part, but so it's not too yellow. I'm gonna add the sienna to it. But if you have already like a perfect brown in your tube, yeah. And also, of course, adding more water is something that makes the color more light. Yeah, because especially in the moment when it's the first time you put it on the paper, because then you have the paper playing a bit the role of white paint because it's like shines through and then you can get the um, and very easy i just colored the tree in one light brown color and that's it i'm let, letting it rest letting it dry and I will go to the house. So the house, it has a fantastic blue door. Looks very nice. Yeah, for this, we don't need much paint. Yeah, so I'm putting on my palette, but I'm putting a tiny spot. Yeah, so then not to waste the paint. Because it's like, and here again, I'm still putting all the lightest, the brightest color. But then the shades that the door has, yeah, I'm going to put on top once it's dry. Um, I also need to think something with the windows, yeah, and I encourage you to analyze what color actually is the inside part of the windows. Let's check girls. Ooh, look, one is almost black, one is somehow reddish, the other one somewhat grayish, whoa, yeah, but uh, maybe it's the artist wanted to show a bit some like curtains, but we know that when it's the daytime the windows that actually they look uh, dark yeah. but i don't put black in there i'm actually putting some leftovers of my gray yeah. and and i'm putting them in this kind of six pieces so then I don't maybe even have to draw the frame of the window. Yeah, because like the whiteness of the paper gonna have if it works. If it's not, you can always put the frame on top. And the other part, the house. Yeah. Again, of course, for the house and for the door, actually, you are free to choose your color. Well, I think the painter actually did a good job of choosing these colors. Yeah. Again, maybe I don't want my red to be that bright. Yeah, and then again, I can do the same story 
if I'm adding a bit of brownish, if I'm adding a bit of this, I'm just making like my paint more calm. But if you're not sure, always, always check it on a separate paper. Let's say I've mixed now the red and I don't know. Ooh, and I check. Is it like the color I like? Or I want to still make it more lighter, yeah? So if you're not sure, always check which one you want to go with. I think both of them are good. Just one is for the sun part. And I would say the upper would be the shadow part. Yeah. And we are painting the house. Actually feel as if I'm the painter and I need to paint the walls. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a little so actually it works I'm just going with the same red on top of my bluish door and it gives a bit the feeling of the um, shadow mm -hmm. now I actually want to feel that the windows also I want to do them a bit more So I would say with this, our like base colors are set. What is left is just go and put all the dark parts on top. So which ones? The dark, um, dark brown for the tree, dark green for the grass. Mm -hmm. How you make dark, you can add a tiny, tiny bit of black. Yeah, so here I'm mixing my 
So here we're mixing brown with black, but I think I had too much black in there. Here we'll be missing, mixing green. Again, if I'm not sure what color I've mixed, I'm checking it. Okay, maybe it could be a little bit more. Another green. Mm -hmm. Nice, much better. So doing shadows on the grass, so either you go like very, very fluffy with your brush, maybe you want to take even a sponge, yeah? if you have one around and you feel comfortable with this. Or I'm doing like these touch-ups with my brush, but I'm just with the corner. So I'm not like putting the whole brush, but just, just one corner. It's actually nice because like I fill in my brush with paint. I go with one corner, the paint is over. I just turn and get another corner. Yeah. And also definitely when you feel the paint is ending on your brush, don't uh, go straight away, you know, to fill up more, but play a bit with this. You see like the dry brush technique when it's already not much paint on your brush and then actually you can get more control over um you know the quantity and what's what's it's putting Of course, also before, actually, maybe I went a bit too quick with this green. For you girls, since you had your goat a bit more dark. So before you put the dark green, I suggest you go and whiten your goat. Because I would also like to know if it worked for you. Yeah. So just a clean well your brush and take clean white paint. And have it a bit more watery and just go on top of your goat and it should convert this grayish into the light grayish yeah the, the dark one For well, this task, actually, it's also nicely works if you have the old brush. So if like you have some old brushes that are kind of getting fluffy, don't rush to throw them away. They are very, very good exactly for these tasks where you need to work with dry brush technique doing the fluffy things. But of course, I keep track and um, of my light green, yeah. So I don't get everything removed. Uh, do we use dark green for this? Yes, exactly. So I was using dark green, and I even mixed it a bit with black. Yes, here it looks like totally dark. But if you see, so with more, so it's um, 
Yeah, because now this is important moment because it needs to get the contrast yeah, with the with the whiteness, with the lightness of grass and um, and the gold. Yeah, because otherwise, like, like my gold now is almost not visible. Yeah? So for it to become visible. Love. I love my old fluffy brush. Never throwing it away. So for the tree, I'm actually going with the same dark greenish, since it's like very dark, it goes almost as if it's dark brown. Okay, a bit, a bit more. And I'm not afraid to put dark green around. Also, especially around the goat. Because like this, I will also make my goat more visible.
Heroes, did it work for you to make your goat lighter? I didn't do the shadow. Okay, you still haven't tried. Okay, okay. I'm just feeling a bit worried for the goat. Yeah, taking uh, this, this making shadows of the grass, it also takes time. Looks like easy, but... Now I feel my goat is still a bit more too white. Yeah, so you see, th this is what's called uh, tonality. And tonality in painting is very important. So you see, if you get the goat too dark, yeah, it looks maybe, you know, not that shiny, not in the center. But let's say now I got mine one too light. And now it feels like, whoa, just too crazily shiny white through the the whole rest. Yeah, and this is something only if you're like uh, a genius, like let's say Caravaggio was, yeah, the Italian painter and who discovered the, um, was using the chiaro oscuro effect. It means light and dark effects. Then maybe like already from the first brush touches, you can get um, the tone that you need, yeah? But when you're still learning, and in this I include also myself, you know, uh, this is something you go and correct along the painting. Yeah? And it depends, like if I put around too dark grass or too light grass and so on. But still I like how the co goat is turning out.
And I can also now correct a bit the shape of my goat by putting a bit like dark around it. But of course it goes only to the making it smaller. <laughs> That not much bigger and of course careful not over them. Painting actually looks much easier than actually it is in painting. Well, that's my opinion. What you think, girls? You find it hard? Or you're doing well?
Okay. Um, I would say my goat is more or less ready because I don't want to make it, you know, over overdoing. This is also something. Once you get this feeling, you need to stop. You need to stop. <laughs> Even if it, there is always feeling, mm, I can improve a bit. I can make this this a bit better. Who, for me, is the most favorite part taking the tape off? All right. Yay. My goatee is ready. Nice. All right, I will stop recording. But of course, we girls, we continue painting till we finish. Um, for those who were watching recording, I hope you enjoyed. I hope your gold looks super sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not an easy painting, I must admit. But it's definitely good to try and, you know, to improve your skills, to bring them a bit more. To the next level. Okay, thank you. <laughs>